All right, here we go. Lots at stake. And we mentioned you want to be playing your best basketball for Florida, seeking their sixth win in the last seven games against Auburn. Obviously, the Tigers are a team that's on the bubble for the NCAA tournament among the last four in, according to Charlie Cream's latest bracketology. So, Auburn with the basketball. Sydney Shaw trying to make a move. Auburn playing so well right now. You see their starting five down low. The three from Honesty Scott Grayson getting them going. It's Scott Grayson who has led the team so far this season. And the number two scorer in all of SEC back the other way. We told you about Matharu. Correa coming off the bench. Faith do one of those seniors along with Zippy Broughton, the freshman. Layla Reynolds and Jariah Warren. Reynolds with the basketball down to Warren. Baseline, not able to get it go to go, but Faith Doot is right there on cleanup duty, making her 104th, the third career start here at Florida. That's a tongue twister right there. Yeah. 143rd <laughs> start, Faith Doot. Good to see her going. She had a couple of tears for a senior night. They had their presentation before the game, and it's been so much fun to watch her. Always a special time and a special moment in a player's career. Jemiah Bingo Young, one of those seniors on the other side for Auburn. Ryan Milton, here's Sydney Shaw again, trying to create some separation, but a traveling violation called against the Tigers guard. I think this is gonna be a pretty low scoring game. The way both teams wanna play, Auburn is going to create offense off of their defense. They are so good. That's what we talked about in practice yesterday. We're Coach Kelly Ray, they are such a hard defensive team, and from the offensive end, when you're going against that, it's hard. So you have to come to your, you have to meet your passes. You got to shorten your passes. You got to be sure about the angle that you take on your drive. Nice angle there, going right with the take with the left hand from Jariah Warren puts the Gators up by a point. They're coming off a couple of losses, including Thursdays three-point loss to Alabama. On the other side, it's Auburn who picked up a couple of important wins, notably that 32-point performance, a career high for Honesty Scott Grayson over Mississippi State on senior night. Honesty Scott Grayson, number 23, just released the ball. The player you want to watch, got to get the, hand, the ball in her hand and the clock goes down. Got to get a shot up before the shot clock expires, and that's a violation and another turnover for Auburn. Kelly Ray Finley in her third season with the Gators, and one who just is a coach who's a player's coach, always seeking the best out of her players, and they just really gravitate to her, and we saw that, as you mentioned, in the senior day presentation before the game. I think from a coach's standpoint, you're always just trying to find the best way. Dippy Broughton to the basket. Yeah, she got the best pass. Oh, I know. Wide open. It's almost like the, the C open for her. <laughs> but taking advantage of a couple of back to back turnovers from Auburn, now Florida on a 6 0 run here to open in this first quarter. What a definitely. They've lost four out of the last five games trying to get on the win. Win column, but honestly, Scott Grayson. Floater, she's the lone Tiger in double figures. Driving baseline, Aliyah Matharo tried to push the issue last touch by the Tigers. And Johnny Harris, boy, what a great job that she has done in her third season on the Plains. And she's got this team in position to potentially make their first NCAA tournament since 2019. I, I mean, when you look at that and you look at when she came in, how every year she had developed this team into her style of play. You know, of course, she came underneath Vic Schaefer, coach at Texas now, but the thing that she has brought, the intensity, the defensive mindset, Auburn's always been a defensive team. But offensively is where they struggled and they've had players step up. But right now, working on the old boards, getting inside the paint and looking for their best shot. Florida thus far is doing so, shooting four of their last five buckets or making four of their last five field goals from the floor. Doing a great job on the board. July Warren got that last one. Milton fouled on the way up. And Milton will go to the free throw line. Leilani Correa, the 
one of the top scorers in the SCC coming off the bench, and that's the nice little mix-up that Kelly Ray Finley likes to have in her instant offense coming off the bench. Well, it's been interesting when you watch Leilani Correa, and that's been the story. A lot of us have asked, like, why is she not starting? Correa likes to come off the bench. She wants the opportunity to settle down. And, you know, sometimes when you start the game, the energy is so – the game is going so fast. It allows her the opportunity to see the game before she has to come in and things settle down. And then, I mean, when you're bringing off the score, your sixth man <laughs> comes off the bench scoring the way she scores. That's a great asset to your team. Snatch down the rebound by McKenna Eddings and one. Where McKenna Eddings, they said if she comes in and adds the element that she can to this team, she makes this Auburn team that much better. Well, Mississippi State game, she had 13 points, but you see how she elevated. She never stopped working to get position to get that ball. And when she gets her feet underneath her and gets set and goes up, she's going to count it, count it for two. Juco All-American coming over and playing in her first season at Auburn. And we often hear coaches talk about how rebounding is about heart and hustle. And both ends of the floor, we've seen that demonstrated, especially the way they've hit the offensive glass. I both teams know what's at stake right now. Great pass along the baseline. The blocking foul called on Shaw. Counted for Correa. Uh, Leilani Correa read that right. Eddie trying to deny her around the wing and went a little bit too far. Sidney Shaw definitely not set right underneath the basket. Got to give her some space to fall to come down. But just the penetrating mindset of Florida, all 10 of their points thus far have come in the paint. So they're attacking the rim. That bounces down. Yeah, they were right there against Alabama. And go back and look at that game tape, as I'm sure that they have over and over and over again. Defensively, you got to pick up that intensity, but you're at home. You want to win for your senior, too. Wonderful ball movement, transition, offense executed, and the smile on Faith Duke's face says it all. Well, Faith Duke running straight down the floor. Don't give it to her to, to dribble. <laughs> Not in the transition game, but give it to her where all she has to do is go right up and score. Taylor Collins, one of the new faces for Auburn, rejected by Faith Duke, one of the top blockers in Florida history and leads the team as Faith Duke will check out. Alberti Rimdahl checks in, but let's go back to that last bucket for Florida. I love it. Look at that. One pass, two pass, three pass. I mean, these are breaks that you run in practice. We practice these. Yeah. You see them running straight up. The ball never touches the floor. You get that one pass, that two pass, and they do it with the finish. I was going to say how satisfied are coaches when they don't see that ball hit the floor. Like when you see it in game action and execute it, you've got to smile. Well, when you see you're practicing it, and then you take practice to the game. <laughs> Traveling violation called against the freshman, Layla Reynolds. Reynolds is slow to get up. She's surrounded by her teammates. They're checking on to make sure she's all right. I think she bumped her head when she fell down. Take another look at this. Take the drive and fall. Yeah, you see her head. Ooh. That's a hard hit. Yeah. Back down the floor. And appears to be old Clay. True freshman out of PG County, Maryland. Oh, you see the switch up in the zone. Order. A uh, little bit of a 1 2 2 zone. Caustic to Shaw, and Shaw rims it in. Sidney Shaw has been really good the last couple of games. Good block right there. So she gets the point. Protecting the basketball after coming down with the rebound is able to get it away. A lot of bodies around the basketball. Rimdahl was the last to have it. Kaya Milton's gonna get called for that foul. Love the hustle. Second in the SEC in scoring and just a player who has helped to be a glue piece for Johnny Harris's program that she's helped to build in that time that she's taken over. Yeah, it's been so much fun watching her and watching her develop. I feel like when she came in the first couple of years, she was trying to find herself. You know, she could come in, she could score, she could find her point, but the consistency that you have seen her going game in and game out, 
every single game this season. She, and, and, and it's fun to watch. Even if her numbers, like if she hasn't scored in double digits, it's her overall impact, her overall game, and you can tell she is the glue for this Auburn Tiger team. A couple of free throws knocked down by Matharu. Out of the break, it's a 15-12 advantage for the Gators. And another turnover there. That one thrown out of bounds. It's five now for the Tigers. When you go back to how they were ever so close, the Florida Gators against Alabama earlier this week. The Gators trailed for most of the game, but they shot the ball well to start out, put up 19 points in that opening quarter. Another strong start for them here. That was a great look by Leilani Correa. Good setup. Like Birdie Rimbaud's been down. Her hands have been in and around. We got uh, Ernie Kindred. Kindred checking in just out of the break, coming over. Remember, started her career at Texas A&M. They're going to say it's actually Auburn basketball. The Tigers will take it the full length of the court as Marshawn Bostic trying to teeth through, kicks it out, and Taylor Collins is able to knock down the short mid-range jumper. And I like Collins stepped into that with so much confidence. That's been a shot that she's been able to get the last couple of games in particular, but really strong around the basket. Let's go back to it because adding this dimension for Taylor Collins is helpful for the Tigers. Well, definitely is Bostic. Drive down low, Collins able to step off the block just enough. So her, team, her player helps out and she's wide open. Collins, the senior, transferred over from Oklahoma State. And boy, well, that's been a great pickup for Auburn, team's leading rebounder. Also a great defender as well. Leads the team in steals on the inbound. Matharu underneath their own basket. They gotta get the ball in. Instead, it's stolen away by Sydney Shaw up the right side. Here's Eddings, lasers it in to her teammate Milton, who may or may not have been expecting it. Well, I think she was expecting the pass, just not as hard as not it as came. <laughs> I think that's the luxury that Auburn has right now. You look at their bench, they have players that keep subbing in over and over. So Johnny Harris, a great job of just stacking up her bench. Well, that was a point of emphasis, right, in the offseason is obviously you're bringing in your players, but you're also trying to create that depth, understanding that this is a long and grueling season. And when you get in the conference play, especially, you get beat up game in and game out to be ready for it. Nearly stolen away by Matharu. Yeah, Florida looks really good defensively. And one of the things, can they withstand this for 40 minutes? This far, Auburn shooting five of seven from the floor. They've knocked down a couple of threes, been perfect from there until then. Eddings off the mark. Leilani Correa comes down with the board. Oh, we good when you have guard that can lead the break, guard then host. Well, look at the feistiness and just the in your face type of defense that Auburn is playing. That went halfway down from Atharu before it popped out. Gators started off so hot, it kind of cooled down. But Auburn on the flip side has not been able to convert on some of these missed attempts and not able to get the points on the board. Well, you spoke to just the cornerstone and the pedigree of this Auburn team and Obviously, Johnny Harris follows suit with that and leads the SEC in turnover margin, second in steals per game. They're scoring offense. I mean, your top three ranking in those categories. That's why they're tough to play against. Well, when you talk about winning championship, what Coach Harris has been a part of, she knows what defense does to your team. And that was the first thing when she got in. I remember talking to her first year really getting the players to buy into her defensive philosophy. Obviously, second year, you move players in, some players leave, some players go, transfer portal, you're, you're looking, you're searching, and you're trying to get, honestly, Scott Grayson was there, she's trying to get her on board to what she wanted to do and how she wanted to play, and now you're starting to see it come into fruition. 
in honesty, to have that little spell on the bench, and it's a three-point ball game. Taylor Scott saving it, or Collins, rather. That's been interesting. We're used to Auburn doing that on the defensive end, but Florida has done a great job of picking up their intensity. Jemaya Mingo Young has to make a decision. Tough shot, baseline reverse, won't fall. Coming up with it is Milton, the offensive board, and stolen away by Rimdahl. That birdie, Rimdahl. A wide open look there, it just won't go for Broughton, but three steals for the Florida Gators. You talked about the way they've been hitting the boards and just the way they've been denying defensively. Yeah, the second gonna get called for that foul. But it's been interesting. Zippy coming off last game against Alabama. She shot four for four from the three-point line. When I saw her in practice yesterday, I said, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you were a three-point shooter. I mean, she did that prior to her injury, and this year has really been trying to get stronger. But it's her senior year. I'm like, you got to go out with a bang and want to play overseas. So definitely trying to build her resume and all the things that she's been able to accomplish. So such a fun player to watch. Indeed, as Faith Duke commits her first personal foul. And that'll send Collins to the line. Florida is over the limit, so foul the rest of the way. And at this quarter, I believe the Tigers in the bonus and Collins. I really like the intensity that both teams are playing mm -hmm. with right now. The pace of the game, while it's up and down, it's also been slowed down at times to half court offense. Knocking down one of two. Well, understanding Florida could move up as high as a nine seed as the end one for Andy Kendrick. Florida says we're coming to play today here at Exact Tech Arena. This is senior day, and this group is fired up. Exactly. Look at this pass right here. Kendra sees it coming. Trubani gets called. Trubani gets called for that foul. And Kendra almost got, I saw the referee kind of hurry up and get over there because she came out there with the stare down. Celia Sumbang is whistled for. Her second personal foul. Kimbani taking a seat on the bench. Kimbani, excuse me. Bostic trying to find someone. Look at that defense. Honestly, I'm honestly Scott Grayson. Birdie is married to her. That one poked away and. Tigers get it right back. Mingo Young surveying the floor, deciding to try to go all the way underneath the basket. <laughs> and around her were three or four white jerseys. That was a tough position to be in. And she, she says, oh, that, that was on me. That was on me. You can't drive to the basket and then pick the ball up. You got to go to the basket knowing where you're going. And if you're not able to go, you've got to pull the ball back up. As soon as she saw two players and then that third player released to come down there, there's nowhere for you to go. Auburn inbounds it underneath. Scott Grayson fell down for a second, popped back up. Sydney Shaw, who's knocked down a three already. Pulling up from the free throw line, no good. Correa comes up with the board, and Florida can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Like they're going to try to find the best shot. Nice five-point lead. Rimdahl, yes! Bernie Rimdahl with a great drive to the basket. That shot won't go, but 16 of the 22 points for the Florida Gators have come in the paint. Trying to make sure they end out their Florida Gator career at Exact Tech Arena with a win. Oh yeah, Zippy Barton, two, two points, and they don't want to go home without a, a win. This is your last game, the last time you'll ever play on this floor. You want to go out with a bang. 
in an awkward fall as Matharu with a take to the basket. She got rolled up interestingly. As Sydney Shaw steps over and gets that charge. It was way underneath there. She rolled up, but she's all right. It's Matharu who picks up the first foul, the offensive foul, and it's Auburn basketball. Bostic with the take all the way. She had her head downhill and finished it off. Well, Florida's done a great job in their press and forcing Auburn in some bad shots or, and or turnovers, and Bostic did a great job of keeping the ball and go until they stop it. Nice recognition and pass from Broughton to Faith Duke. Well, Faith Duke, who has a season high 11 points. Scratch that comment right there. Faith Duke right now is off to a great start. And underneath the missed opportunity for Milton. And tracking down the rebound is Duke. Milton not able to get that finish, but they do. Oh, another back door is Dickie Barton off of that turnover. What do you see different from last game to this game with the Florida Gators, how they are on the offensive end? Well, I think they're just being way more aggressive. You know, I had a chance to watch that Florida-Alabama game that they played on Thursday. They lost by three. They had an opportunity to tie the game down the stretch. Aaliyah Matharu ended up getting a technical, fouled out of the game early. They had to play the whole fourth quarter without her. But I think because of that, other players had to step up. And so what you see is Florida actually looks a lot more confident, I feel like, than they did on Thursday. Their defensive intensity has definitely shot up. And I think as a team, when you're trying to find that win, defense is where you start. In the corner for a three, and Scott Grayson knocks down her second triple of the game. She's got eight points now. Honestly, Scott Grayson, not the player you want to leave wide open. That could have been a foul on Reynolds. That didn't go down to the floor. Tharu surveying. Grayson going up and getting the board. Right now, both teams pretty even in the rebound column. Nine for Auburn, 10 total for the Gators. Uh, Grayson, a little shake and bake, won't go down. I'll tell you where the game is really shown right now. Points in the paint. Florida has 18 points in the paint compared to Auburn, four. Tracking down that rebound, Eddings brings it across half court and then settles into their offense. Back to Marshawn Bostic. Bostic once more. And right now, you just see the speed with which she takes off with, and she is just zooming by. Now, Auburn settling in a little bit more in this second quarter and trying to, you know, break through a little bit more here, just trailing by two. I think for Auburn, you do have to settle down. You know, Florida, the emotions are always high on senior night. Whenever you have the home team, they do the celebration. The seniors are going to come out. They're going to be ready to play. And the team doesn't want to lose for your seniors. So, Gators came out hot. Bostic coming out hot to her. <laughs> and she goes. This is her third layup. I mean, she goes. She just explodes to the basket. And you got to bring that help side over. Bostic now with six points, a double dribble, and a turnover as Auburn currently on a 7-0 run to even up this ball game. Marshawn Bostic has been responsible. Yeah, take another bucket. look at this Bostic basket and she blow by Bodie Rimdahl. Help size, Doug is not able to come over and help. When you heard Alyssa and Steffi talking about how this game is all important for the Auburn Tigers trying to get into the NCAA tournament. Had not been there since 2019. Currently, one of the last four teams in in the latest bracketology. And when you think about the wins that they've been able to put together over top 50 net opponents, you go back to that win against LSU that certainly sticks out and stands out. A win here would help further bolster it, potentially. Yeah, but I think if you're Auburn, you can't really focus on that right now. You got to get the win, and I force yet another turnover. So that is three turnovers in a row that Florida had not been able to get a strong look at the basket. 
Kelly Ray Finley is just, hey, reminding them also, calm down, calm, just settle in, okay? <laughs> They've been playing great up into this point. As Correa tried to jump that pass and it was last touch by Scott Grayson. So good anticipation there from Leilani Correa. Yeah, that's, Nico Young has to see Leilani right there jumping out. Don't put honest Scott Grayson in that position because you're also worried about a collision and potentially an injury going into an SEC conference. Correa already with five points off the bench trying to add to that total and she'll get that opportunity as she's fouled and will go to the charity strike. Now Savannah Scott gets called for that foul number 30 and coming off the pick and roll, Correa does a good job of just getting into her body to get to the free throw line. You think about just Correa and what she's been able to accomplish. We talked about fourth overall in scoring in the SEC, number one during conference play. That's three-point percentage during SEC play as well. And she's just grown in confidence, and it's extended to her teammates. They know what they can expect out of her when she comes off the bench. Yeah, she's had some games where some of the shots that she has taken have been unbelievable. I know South Carolina when they played, and uh, anytime you, you get a little bit of credit from the one and only Coach Staley, I mean, <laughs> that, that's got to be a good feeling. Indeed. Scott Grayson, leading scorer for the Tigers. On the take, and too strong for Scott Grayson. Back the other way. Here come the Gators. Ribdahl once again with the clear pass. Oh, and she misses. I like to drive. Not to finish. Just, just got to finish it off. <laughs> Jemiah Bingo Young, who's provided some consistency for this group for Johnny Harris. As Eddings looked to have last touched it, but it may have been poked away by the Gators from behind. At yeah, Auburn right now just seems like China, just this possession. A little bit of hot potato, trying to make some plays. I just think when they play together, when they drive and kick and drive and kick, they're such a good team to watch. Shot clock winding down and Correa steps in, intercepts the pass. She's running on the break and the finish. Defense leads to offense and that is what you see. Nice drive, nice pass, Bostic to Scott. Back the other way and a quick answer. It's a late two point ball game favoring the home Gators. I we knew this was gonna be a close game. Both teams, the way they play, the been able to stay with them and really done a great job on the defensive end. And that one goes off the fingertips of Duke. But let's go back to how Florida has just been kicking it into high gear, their defense turning into offense. Yeah, Leilani Correa started with the steal, passed it out, and then led the block all the way down with a basket. But Auburn came right back at him, Bostic using her speed to get up the floor. Savannah Scott already down the floor, able to get that basket in. Already with five steals now, the Gators as a whole, and they're fourth in the league in steals per game, just under 10. But that's also helped them in the fast break category, right? So outscoring their opponent today, nine to two in fast break points. Jemiah Mingo Young, who can do just a little bit of everything for Auburn. Flirted with the triple-double, had eight rebounds, seven assists, and six points in their last game. The assist is completed there as Taylor Collins makes the bucket. And then right there, stepping in is Eddings. The steal pulls up, and yes, with full confidence in transition. And that'll put the Tigers in front, 31-28. And those are the things that Auburn is known for. You have to be, you have to meet the pass. First off, you see Eddings, Leilani Correa going back, Eddings meeting the ball, so she's able to get that steal right into her pull up. Second best team in the league in terms of steals are the Auburn Tigers. 
right now that's helped to give them a temporary lead. Correa for three off the mark. Scott coming up with the board. That's the banner, Scott. Got a freshman of the week honors early on the season. You know what she's able to do. And Collin down low with the good finish. Well, Taylor Collins, who just is a steady Eddie presence for the Tigers since joining the team. Seven points now. The thought grew off the screen. Great look. And Correa's done a good job on the board. Oh, man. Yes, she has. Oh, oh, oh man. man. Talk about some of those <laughs> That was one of them right there for Leilani Correa. Oh, man. But excellent observation because, yes, we know that she can put up points, but she is also rushed to the board. She's got five rebounds so far on this one. Well, staying active, doing whatever it takes to get this win. It's hard to guard when you go for the board and not just a steady player. Savannah Scott missed the first one. But sticking with it, it puts it back in. Kendrick trying to take Scott off the dribble. And Scott picks up the foul. Yeah, great job, Kendrick. Going to the basket, but taking a look at this. Watch Leilani Correa. That's the old man I said off. She didn't even call the bank. You don't get that if you don't call the bank. But then we go back. Auburn, great job on the board. Savannah Scott getting her put back, getting a rebound. Nice little put back. Scott now with two fouls, and she'll stay in the game. Kendrick at the line, knocks down the front end. Well, Wednesday, there's a men's basketball doubleheader right here on the SEC Network, and this featured matchup is Vanderbilt squaring off against number 16, Kentucky, at Rupp Arena at 9 Eastern. How about the Cats avoiding the upset of from Arkansas, thanks to Rob Dillingham, his 15 points off the bench in a critical stretch of the game. Some substitutions do back into the ball game. We saw both teams shoot the ball well in the first quarter. Auburn has six, picked up steam, shooting 69% from the floor in the second. Rims off, and again, another rebound, half a dozen now for Correa. Auburn right now shooting 56% in a game. That one popped out. Here's Mingo Young. Eddings, good look from the corner. Yes, man. Layla Reynolds hit the deck down low, and I don't know how McKenna Eddings get, got that wide open. Duke. Asking for someone to come get the basketball. A lot of hand activity, and the personal foul is whistled against Auburn and Taylor Collins. And a little chippiness right here as Kelly Ray Finley is asking her team to come back to the bench. Ash, yeah, really chippy right now. Look at this. Auburn trying to get their. Huddle, Florida trying to get their huddle, and Collins comes in. So this is how the play in it ended. Collins whistled for the Previous foul. play is under review. The previous play is under review. So Collins made herself available in that Florida huddle. <laughs> made herself available. <laughs> I like how you said that. The ruling on the floor is a double intentional foul on blue 14 and white four after the foul committed by blue 14. Zippy Broughton, so this is what the ruling is for an intentional foul. Obviously not a legitimate play on the basketball. That has nothing to do with it. More of the excessive uh, hard contact and the illegal contact that you may see after the play. The conference tournament that hopefully if you make it to the NCAA tournament, you want to be playing your best basketball. On the inbound, and it's stolen away by the Tigers. So the Tigers now with five steals. And honestly, Scott Grayson 
You set to inbound it. Scott Grayson along with Eddings, McKenna Eddings, both with eight points for the Tigers. Eddings way off the mark and airmailed that one. I think Reynolds put a hand up at the last minute, might have deterred the, the shot. On the other side, it's been Correa, the lone player on the court in double figures and a charge against goes against Layla Reynolds. So that's her second personal foul. Uh, Layla Reynolds got to get that pull up jump shot. She get one dribble. All she had to do was pull up. She had the space to get it. Tried to go in. Jemaya Mingo Young. Great job of getting her feet set and getting ran over. And those are the types of plays when we had the opportunity to talk with associate head coach Fred Williams yesterday at practice, you know, he mentioned the, the types of plays that he wants to see from this team and taking a couple of charges was among them, along with taking away possessions from the game. And taking away your first and second option. I mean, the first option of that play, really, Eddie is gonna get called for that foul. Not to get set, but the first option for the play for Florida is to get the ball to the high post. They do deny. They try to get to the wing. Layla Reynolds denied. Then she goes back door. That's the third option for Florida, which is exactly what Auburn forces you to do. Dude, looking, sizing Ooh, up. Great they goal. do. Thanks, she's smiling. I like that. That was a great move. Face do. Right now, Faith Dude is on one, four for four from the floor. She's got eight points on this senior day. Mingo Young, the floor general, trying to share where to go. Got to get moving about four seconds of the differential shot clock game clock. Got to get it up. And a shot clock violation on the Tigers. So the Gators will get the basketball with 3.3 seconds remaining. You gotta know the shot clock. And to Miami Mingo Young, you got to make a play and you gotta put that ball up. Quickly in to Zippy. 0 for 7 from the three-point line, make it 0 for 8. But it's a three-point ball game going into the locker room. Eight points closing in on an SCC best, 11 points. You look at the way Auburn has shot the basketball, which helps to give them the slight advantage, but we mentioned how Florida attacked the paint during that first half, and 22 points in the paint for the Gators. Uh, first play right there, that's unfortunate. Honestly, Scott Grayson tripped with the ball to get called for a traveling, so it'll go straight back to Florida. We talked about the physical nature of this game if you're just tuning in, but also we've seen some hard falls as well, Tamika. Another one on that take there as Zippy brought and slow to get up. Jemaya Mingo Young bringing it back the other way, a 5-4 advantage temporarily for the Auburn Tigers. Sydney Shaw, who knocked down a couple of triples in that first half, decides to take it to the hoop and finishes it off. I love it. Attack the basket, get those points in the paint. Coming right back, being a third, and take it right back at Shaw. A nice little flex at the end of that one from Matharu. And those are her first two points of the game. Did not shoot the ball well in the first half, so trying to figure out a way to get her going. 57% from the floor overall for the Auburn Tigers. Four of seven from beyond the arc. In this ball game, Scott Grayson, baseline won't go. A battle for the basketball and it stays with the Tigers. A faith through trying to box out Milton. Milton does a good job of continuing to move to try to get the rebound. Shaw on the inbound. Looking, looking, and up ahead, and stolen away by Aaliyah Matharu. Go get it, ma'am. Yes, and finish. You talked about 
thought she was quiet in that first yes. half. Now they may have awakened the little drunk. the beast. Yeah. <laughs> Scores you have, to, you have to be aggr aggressive on the offensive end. Aliyah Mathario can sometimes look like she's not engaged, but she's always engaged and going after the ball. That's for three. Duke coming up with the rebound and then some contact, and they're going to say it's last touched and out of bounds on Duke. Milton came over and knocked straight through, but they did not call that foul. That is not a foul. So you look right here, and yeah, she yep. stepped out of bounds. Trying to get the ball back to Zippy Bot. Milton's been really aggressive on the board. Great job, Collins coming around off that screen. But we've been impressed overall to make uh, just about the defense that we have seen. Here today we talked about it would be a low scoring game but both teams have brought their a game on the defensive end trying to up the ante in pressure as Ryan turns the ball over trying to get it to Aliyah Mataru but yes definitely the, the defensive intensity some of the turnovers are unforced errors but when you're having to think harder than you normally think those are the errors that sometimes that sometimes happen within the flow of the game. Well, two of the top teams in the SEC in terms of steals. Number two for Auburn, fourth for Florida as there's a foul on the floor. And it's whistled against Brock. That's her second team foul. Has to be wide for first time. Put a lot of pressure. You gotta make it hard for honestly Scott Grayson as a team. What you're trying to do whenever you go against one of the best players, you want to make it hard for them. You want to make they're not gonna get an easy catch. Honestly, Scott Grayson got open for a couple of looks earlier on, but trying to figure out a way to keep her from getting it, and right away the ball goes right back to him. See Scott Grayson now in double figures and out of bounds. For Florida. So when you look at Auburn and their postseason resume and why they are a team that's just right there on the bubble, you look at that huge win over LSU at home. They stunned and upset the national champions. Last four in that bracketology, but their net ranking currently at 46. What does a win here do for them today? Besides all of that, confidence, and especially going against a team like this with so much on the line. You know, obviously for them, trying to get to the NCAA tournament. First time since 2019, as you said, mentioned in the first half. So there's a lot at stake, but I think even more importantly, it's the confidence aspect. You go into the SEC conference play, you don't play until Thursday, then you get an opportunity, hopefully to make a run, get a higher seating, and then you get a chance to rest and prepare for the NCAA tournament. Johnny Harris, who's been a part of a many NCAA tournaments, remember was a part of that staff with Gary Blair at Texas a and when won the national championship back in 2011. Biggest lead of the game now for the Tigers here. The Tharu with a great look, won't fall. Scott Grayson collects the board, stolen away, and Matharu will go to the free throw line. Right, so she just keeps popping up in those places where there's most opportune. Well, what I love away. about this is she missed the shot and didn't give up. Right, most players would hang their head because she hasn't shot the ball well. Two for nine right now, over three from the three-point line. So it'd be easy for you to put your head down, but she keep playing. She had kept playing through. Great steal, getting her to the free throw line. Well, next Sunday, right here on the SEC Network, we'll have a softball quadruple header that starts at noon Eastern. Feature the last day of the game, game of the day, number 11, Alabama, hosting 15th-ranked Florida. Second game of three-game series from the Rhodes House. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern. How about the Gators, who just recently shut out for 18 UCLA? Some Walt Scrooge coming back, ready for another terrific season here. sitting in that 2-3 zone trying to make it hard and Leilani Correa she was just anticipating that one all the way and we've seen that
that a couple of times today. How Leilani Correa has stolen away, led the break, and finished it off. That's going to be 16 turnovers for Auburn. Great contestant challenge there from Kindred. Hard fall from Scott Grayson. But let's go back to that great defense from Leilani Correa. Well, Leilani Correa, I saw it happen before it even happened. There was really nowhere for Sidney Shaw to pass the ball but to Correa, and a great job finishing on the other end. Correa, who has just been an improved presence here in Florida. One of those experienced guards for Kelly Ray Finley. Well, it's her second season here, and it's been fun watching even for her as she continued to get better. Last year, you know, she averaged 11.8 points per game, and she went from 11.8 to 17.7 in a matter of a season. Obviously, we have other players that have come. Leah McCauley here last year. She had to sit out the transfer portal rules, and we got... A, a nice freshman on the side that's coming out and doing some really big things for this world. Other players have stepped up as well, but Leilani Correa and Aliyah Masaru have been the, the engine, the duo that has really kept this thing going. Senior out of Washington, D.C., who has been kind of a double-digit guaranteed score for the Gators. She leads them in that category, but the assertiveness, the aggressiveness that she's ball to the court. Just a really great competitor. Gator is perfect from the charity stripe. 14 of 14 from the line today as Matharu knocks down a couple. Marshawn Bostic going right to the heart of Rimdahl. Rimdahl picks up her first personal foul. Bostic, we've seen her go with that left hand. But on the other hand, in the first, first half, she got three straight lines to the basket. And now, same thing. Gator put out a press and she just goes. The junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, front ends that one. But you see just the attack that she has in the offense, and then she just brings a high level of energy this Tiger team. Well, you got to guard her. And she's a different look than Jemiah Mingo Young. Aliyah Matharu <laughs> continues to work. And I mean, scissor-like as yeah. Matharu was not going to be denied. And then a collision there with Eddings. Again, a lot of contact. That could have been a bad, bad play, but you see right here, I was running back and Eddie was just, he just rushing past that right shoulder, that left shoulder. Forty-eight, forty-six. From exact tech arena at the Steve O'Connell Center here in Gainesville. Forty Gators close out with the win in the SEC season at home as Correa was fouled, so she'll shoot a couple. Uh, one thing, Correa does a great job. She her length. And I think when you're looking at her from afar, you don't realize, but when you get close enough to her and have a chance, when she drives, she's really good at extending her body for the long release. Most people go up and they keep the ball tight to their body and go up for the finish, but she's almost like a finger roll. Quick reminder here that Monday night SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the Auburn men's basketball team at 7 Eastern. They go all-access with Texas a and women's program. You'll get never before seen footage from players and coaches. Real behind the scenes look right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. There's so much movement that can happen. We talk about the improvement that we've seen. For this Auburn team under Johnny Harris, how about Johnny Taylor, the job she's done at Texas A&M. You know, Christy Curry has her group in position to potentially get a double bye. They can pull out a win at Bama. Uh, cool. The Crimson Tide can pull out a win today. At Tennessee, at South Carolina, they were down at half. Oh, 
we are going to be jockeying for position here on this final day of SEC play. Remember, you and I were talking about that SEC tournament it is right around the corner. Starts Wednesday. And you love, as a competitor and as a fan and a spectator, you love watching it go down to the wire like this. Today is an important day for all SEC teams. Mm -hmm. This went stolen away by Bostick, and the speedy Matharu tried to catch up to her. She fouled her from behind, and a little bit of uh, communicating between Matharu and Bostick. Again, this has been a competitive game, and we'll come back here with free throws on the other side. All right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, or SEC Now. Wow. We will be there as well. Everybody. Everybody. And the interesting thing that always happens, tournament time, as we all know, Anything can happen, and that's been the fun part. You and I were just talking. I said, you know, I, I, as a fan and a spectator and commentator, watching the game and it coming down to the last day the way that it has, so many teams muddled in the middle, and everything that happened, by the end of the day, we will have a brand new breath. Like, this will look <laughs> brand new, and I think that's the fun part of, of this game. Good defense there by Milton, but yes, to your point, Tamika, the pitcher will get clearer by the end of the day, and obviously South Carolina has been the standard bearer, undefeated uh, all season long. Don Staley has just done a tremendous job with that group, and they are the team to beat. They are the team to knock off, and the question is, you know, who's going to bring that level of excitement or anticipation is going to meet them in that championship, potentially in the championship game? Well, I think Don, coming off of last season and the disappointment for that team, even coming into this year, she said there is some, her expectations were not where they are right now. You know, coming in, like kind of a rebuilding, you lose, you lose a lot. <laughs> that go into the draft of course Leah Boston and uh, in, in Indiana and rookie of the year but the team that has come out this year I think having the experience of going against those players you step into a new role and you're ready to play off the miss there's Jariah Warren on cleanup duty and you think about just Camille Cardozo and the year that she's put together obviously one of the front runners for the SEC Player of the Year conversation to the Pow Pow, the addition that she's been, Raven Johnson, Bree Hall, Ashley Watkins. Just a tough group all around to contend with the Game Cops. Sean Bostick, she's going to the basket. Right now, Auburn, who has just gone cold from the floor, really four minutes gone by without a basket. Get number 23 is a player that you're going to look at, and Bostic takes it right in. Maya Warren going to get called for that foul. We keep speaking to just the aggressiveness that we have seen, and how both sides, but especially for Auburn, just attacking the rim. Marshawn Bostic on the other side. We've seen Aliyah Matharu, Bernie Rimdahl do a little bit of that as well. Bostic right now sitting at 11 points, five of six from the free throw line. When you go back to January 4th where she had a season high 17 points against the Tennessee Lady Bulls. My question earlier was for, for Auburn, you have one player that's double digits, and that's honestly Scott Grayson. How do you get somebody else that can be a more consistent score? They've had players in and out, you know, it's been a lot of highs and lows. Every single night, you don't know what you're going to get from certain players. And I think that's probably the growth area, like at Auburn, is how do they get more consistency? First miss of the day for Faith Dude, who we mentioned at the half as a perfect 4-4 from the floor on this senior day. But yes, who is going to be that consistent score? Great pass from Scott Grayson down to Savannah Scott. And it's about time that, that, that they've seen this. That Auburn, off that pick and roll, has had plenty of opportunity where players have been wide open underneath the basket, but a great look from honestly Scott Grayson to Savannah Scott. Auburn, Take another look at 
look at it right here. And see the pick and roll. Savannah Scott, great job. Faith Duke does not drop. Back to her own player. And Scott wide open underneath the basket. Savannah Scott has half a dozen points off the bench. Meanwhile, honestly, Scott Grayson was whistled for her third personal foul. So she'll go to the bench. We'll be curious to see how Auburn is able to maintain this lead currently. With Zippy Broughton at the line, a senior from Wetumpka, Alabama. Talk about how great she was from beyond the arc in their last game. Just recently announced as a member of the SCC Community Service Team. And one of those seniors we mentioned honored before today's game. And we talk about her journey, what she's been through and how she's been able to come back after a season ending injury. She's trying to save her best for last here for the game. Her best for last. But I like though with the smile. Being back on the court and the energy that she brings to the team. So I talked to Coach Kelly Ray Finley. One of the things she says, like I don't know how I'm gonna replace that. And I don't think she is a player you replace. I think you find other players that can add pieces of what Zippy has brought to this program. The defense there for Marshawn Boston coming up with the steal. Tabani just leaves it short. She tried to complete the fast break and floating it up, but helped up by our teammates. Not gonna let a wide open break and see Correa trying to come. Yeah, Shibani hits the back a little really hard. But we have said, this is an aggressive game. Both teams don't want to go out with a loss. So you're pulling everything you possibly have out to try to come out with that W. So you Junior from Mozambique. It's one of two. two minutes of this third quarter. It's been pretty evenly matched in the scoring column for both teams. Bertie Rindahl with a great look from three. Can't get it to go. Great rebound. Savannah Scott surrounded by three players. And on the break again. This time finishing it off is Bonnie. Yes. Buddy Rimdahl is the Gators' three-point shooter, but as a whole for the Gators, they are 0 for 11. And great job, Leilani Perea, heading down the floor. There's a whole lot of want out here on this court. You're seeing put that on display. Onions for three! Swish it down. Oh, you can feel it. You can feel the energy from both of these teams. Every single possession. There is a fight, a hunger, a competitiveness that you're seeing here on this final day of the regular season. And this is just the appetizer. Still a lot <laughs> more basketball to be played. We mentioned Tennessee, South Carolina in action. During Mississippi State. Coming up a little bit later, Alabama, Texas A&M, George Vanderbilt. I mean, like, look, all day, all day, all day, all day. I tell you, we look at this standing at the end of the day. Like, I started preparing for the SEC tournament. Then I had to stop myself because I'm like, anything is possible. Right. <laughs> well, you, well, you just, you, you look to... Obviously, you had LSU, the defending national champions, right? You, you knew South Carolina once you saw the ball get rolling for them. But how about Ole Miss in the job that they've done? How about Shea Ralph and Vanderbilt? And Kelly Harper's group in Knoxville trying to hold tight to that fourth spot, get that double by. Sydney Shaw got it. Last nice shot right here. Florida gonna hold it. Seven points now for 
Sydney Shaw, a 10 point advantage here for the Tigers, still unable to knock down a three, but Layla Reynolds able to track down the offensive board before the end of the quarter, no good. A couple of good looks and attempts for the Florida Gators just wouldn't go down. I think I'm, I'm, I'm speechless right now because when you look at the standings, really, I mean, look at all of these teams that are bunched in the middle, starting with Vanderbilt all the way down, really, to Florida. Kentucky, I mean, they can get the win. Five, they can go 5-11 and 11 if they tie Florida. I mean, there's so many things that could happen before the end of the day. I, I know I keep saying that, but... That's the reality, yep. yes. You want to stay at seven for Auburn. They want to stay at seven. They have to win this game. However, Florida is not going to give up without a fight. And if you're just tuning in, folks, I mean, this has been an incredibly physical ball game. A, a lot of back and forth. And, and for Florida, they started out hot. I mean, they were the ones who were the aggressors. As you mentioned, that second quarter, Johnny Harris's team was able to try to take a little bit of control. In a 10-point ball game, still a very easy margin or a very manageable margin for Florida to come back here in these final 10 minutes. Auburn is 40.2% for the game. Right now, they are shooting 57% for the game. So when you look at that in itself, Florida obviously is, they started out hot. They got to pick it up on the defensive end. And Auburn, Auburn getting some really good looks at the basket. And connecting there, honestly, Scott Grayson, who's on the floor, she's got three personal fouls. She leads her team overall in scoring on the season. But today it's Marshawn Bostick who has added a nice lift with 13 points off the bench. Marshawn Bostic and Edding. Eddings has 11. Been really aggressive sitting on the bench right now. We thought Matharu, who is awakened here in this second half. All 15 of her points have come in the second half. Correa, who's been steady Eddie. And she's fouled on the way up. And honestly, Scott Grayson banged up underneath. Slow to get up. That's her fourth personal foul. Uh, they thought that was a oh, charge. Yeah, Michael. charge on Maylani Correa. Correction there. Thank you, partner. But, uh, <laughs> oh, coming around there. Now that she's got Grayson gets set. You see her feet set. Correa goes in. Ah, that could have probably gone yeah, either way. Yeah. That would have been a bad blow for Auburn. The push off back the other way, and the ball don't lie as the push off. That's the fourth personal foul. Now gets honestly Scott Grayson. Uh, now you got to make a decision. What are you going to do with honestly Scott Grayson? You're going to put new play, a look right here. Yep, you see that left arm extend. Anytime that arm extend, I will say this the last two possessions really, possession prior to, could have went either way. That could have been a fourth foul. Taru leaves it short. Saved by Kendrick. And bucket for Reynolds. And that's going to be Layla Reynolds. That's her first two points for the game. Good to see her battling down low. And we were mentioning during the break, the Duhon not available. She's banged up for Auburn here on the break. Up ahead to Kermit. Oh, yes! It's just now a four-point ball game. And again, the defensive intensity leading to great offense. And that energy right here past Layla Reynolds. Edges it up to Correa. Florida on the comeback. Correa's come up with a couple of steals. And remember, she had that stretch of games where she had 30-point outings against Georgia, Mississippi State, and then put up a career-high 33 against Ole Miss, one of the top scorers in the league and trying to will her team back into it. Just trailing by four here as Florida, who's opened the quarter on a six nothing run to try to cut into the deficit. 
Uh, great help right there. Colin trying to post up Matharu, and Kindred read that, came over for the steal. 11th steal by this Florida Gator defense here today. Matharu has been the other part of that duo with Correa. Both she and Correa have combined for 33 points here today. Eddie's gonna get called for that foul. That's gonna be her third foul. It's a little bit too aggressive. Going against Leilani Correa, trying to slow her down. 13 foul for Auburn. They're just one for Florida. Rimdahl won't go. Too strong for three. And Eddings, they have taken a shot to the face. I think this has just been an aggressive game. So Reynolds will get called for that foul. See the ball bounce off and go clear. Yeah. Both players aggressively going for the ball. How much do you feel all of this? You don't necessarily feel maybe all of it in the moment because there's some adrenaline kicking in, but afterward, how much do you feel it? Uh, hot tub, cold tub, <laughs> ice bath, or whatever it takes. And, you know, great thing for both teams. The SEC conference will start, but it won't start till Wednesday. Get that bye from Auburn chance to wait to the third day to play, not necessarily traveling. Ooh, well, good looks there, and again. Now that's wow. a tough foul right now that, there. There is a lot happening out on this court. We talked about it being chippy before, but the blows to the head, the hard falls yeah. on the and hardwood. Look at this right here. He just throws her down. Yeah. That is going to be more than just a regular foul. Right. They're going to take another look at it and see if it was an in intentional foul. Or that could change the flow of the game real fast. One more upcoming for Shaw. Just like that, you see Auburn up now by six. And, you know, best case scenario, they hit a three. Now you're up by nine, but automatically changing the trajectory of the game. Those were the first points of the quarter for Auburn at the free throw line. Just three and a half minutes gone by the Tigers. Trying to win this one, lock up the seventh seed in the SEC tournament next week, but also add to their case for the NCAA tournament, trying to make it the first time in five years. Uh, Shumani getting called, Shumani getting called for the foul. Gonna be hard for us. McKenna Eddings checking back into the ball game for her. Well, right now for Auburn, you have honestly Scott Grayson, the player that you need on the floor, sitting on the bench with four fouls. Shimbani goes back out. Correa with three blue jerseys around her is still able to finish it off. And we'll go to the charity stripe to try to complete the three-point play. All right, move by. Leilani Correa, look at this. She sees Sydney Shaw come over. And she altered herself in the air. You see Shaw trying to move her body over to get that charge, but that's going to be called a block. Not deterred by those three blue jerseys converging in. And right now, honestly, Scott Grayson, all she could do is watch on. Remember, she's the leading scorer for the Tigers, the lone player in double figures on average for the season. Gotta be careful.
careful. You can't put her in this game early, too early. Marshawn Bostic, who has played well today, 13 points. She's going to add to that total now with 15. Well, Savannah Scott is how she got that open. She literally cleared the path for her. Eddings, who's also had a nice ball game, comes up with the loose ball. Once more, Marshawn Bostic decides to pull it out and operate in the half court. That's a smart decision by Bostic. You don't, you don't have a good look at the basket, pull it out, set up your offense, and get a good look. Auburn searching for their second SEC road win of the season, their lone one coming against Missouri earlier this season. Back on February 11th. Now, Florida with an opportunity. Correa, who has been hot three games straight with 20 points or more. And again, her ability to get to the free throw line, to get those looks that she wants. And Correa, who's seven of eight from the line, will go back there. Well, her ability to keep moving. She doesn't stop. She gets denied, she goes back door. Even throughout the play, watch her. She She's always moving. It's hard to guard a player that is always moving because when you try to take a break at the moment, Correa slips and goes back door and gets herself to free throw. Leilani Correa with a double-double here today. 22 points, 10 boards for the senior out of Manchester, New Jersey. She had a 22-point performance Thursday against Bama. Oftentimes you find her in double figures, but that lift that she provides off the bench for Kelly Ray Finley. She, she knows how to score. She knows how to come and get the ball. She knows how to make sure that she's creating enough space for her to get herself her shots off. And having other scorers out there is definitely a benefit. But Tharu thought about it for three, and that has just not been the favorable distance for the Gators here this afternoon. The mishandler of the ball, and Matharu is there, Johnny, on the spot. And we'll shoot a couple. When you're looking at team fouls, Auburn with five team fouls, so Florida will be in the bonus. Well, this started with Faith Duke. Look at that defense right there, making it hard. Savannah Scott, not comfortable with taking a dribble, throws the ball to Colin at her feet, and Matharu just hanging out, because that's what she does, hanging out, able to get the ball. They are cutting in on this lead. Yeah, they can pull within one if Matharu is able to knock down this free throw. And she has picked up 11 of her 17 points from the line today. And again, all coming alive here in the second half. Marshawn Bostic, who has found success all game long doing just that just and continues to go back. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> she is going hard to the basket. Barton thought about it, but Tharu with the ball in her hands, having to operate with single digits on the shot clock. The take inside the move a little round. And another whistle. That's gonna be on McKenna Eddings. That's her fourth. That's her fourth as honestly Scott Grayson set to check back in with four personal fouls. And Florida has had success outscoring the Tigers 11 to 6 while Greg, Scott Grayson was on the bench. I think just her presence on the floor makes a difference. It calms them down. You have, you have players trying to fill in roles that honestly Scott Grayson normally fills. She can do it, and it's easy for her to do it, but it's just her presence on the floor that calms the Tiger team down. That one rattles home. Well, the Gators have had this aggressive mindset all game long. 40 points in the paint, 29 trips to the free throw line. They're within one here. And you can hear the fan 
They are the sixth man right now. Bostic with the move, forced that one up. Broughton thought about shoving up the floor at the sides, slows it down, and Gators have the opportunity to grab the lead back here on this possession. I don't like that possession for Bostic. Honestly, she's got Grayson coming back on the floor. You gotta get on the ball. Correa has the ball in her hand. Gotta get it up quickly. And the contest there from Collins deflected it. And a shot clock violation, turnover Tigers. And you sensed something was off there. Yeah, I mean, Tippy Rotten dribbled the ball almost the whole shot clock. And you've had success with driving to the basket, attacking, and getting to the free throw line. Keep the same mentality. I don't see Scott Grayson down the floor, but if anything, you got to... I'd be attacking him. That tip to Scott. That's been there some time today. <laughs> and, and look, when they take advantage of it, it looks pretty in its yeah, execution. Great Savannah Scott. Great finish at the basket. With maybe a little bit of contact. Still a one possession ball game, under two minutes to go here from Gainesville. Stolen away by McKenna Eddings. Marshawn Bostic up ahead to a sprinting Honesty Scott Grayson. Extends the lead out now to five. What a definitely gonna call a timeout. All you can do is focus on right where you are right now in this moment. You got a minute and 29 seconds left. A Florida Gator team that is not going to give up. Down by five at home. And Auburn trying to get one on the road. Batharu and Correa have been great, but that one partially deflected on the attempt. Auburn going to take their time, and Florida's got to initiate some type of defense. searching for its first 500 finish in SCC play since they last went to the tournament in 2019. Under a minute away. And they're going to have a review. Johnny Harris wants to review that. Call on the floor is blue ball. Uh, I'm sorry, the call on the floor is white ball. The play is under review. So Joe Vasili, Timothy Green, they're going to have a review of it. And who was it last touched by? Take another look at it. It'd be Savannah Scott, but then Aaliyah Mathar comes over. Oh, I think it last touched maybe the leg of Scott. Uh, touches the leg. Uh, that angle really is not, not really definitive. The other look seemed to be maybe ricocheted off of Scott last. I think it's, uh, I think it's more of basketball. You drive the ball, ball to the basket. The ball on the floor is confirmed. White ball. The clock will be reset to 53.8. They're in the bonus, so they could get to the charity stripe. They got to take advantage. They move quickly for sure. Nice recognition and able to corral the basketball is Jariah Warren and that review they score quickly and a timeout taken by Auburn so Auburn has two remaining Florida has two remaining you have the opportunity to steal and foul because you're not sending them to the free throw line but you want to go for that steal initially and play straight up defense try to force a turnover Gracie, dribbling it down. Nine and counting on the shot clock. Move is made to the hoop and the hard foul, but wow, there was a lot of ball there as well from Jariah, Jariah Warren. And this honestly, is Scott Grayson slow to get up here.
Let's get another look at it. Right here. A bit with the body. Honestly, she's yeah. got Grayson runs in the face, dude. So Duke was whistled for the foul on the front side. Warren was coming from the back side to try to get that ball. And honestly, Scott Grayson will shoot a couple. Two for two at the line today. And great players step up and make great plays down the stretch. She ended up having to be on the bench for longer than she would have liked with the four fouls, but when she come back in, has really calmed the team down. 50 free throws we've seen in this game. Timeout taken on the floor. Correa on the inbound, looking for Rimdahl, gets it in to Matharu, who makes a hustle to the basket, lot of contact, rolls around that one! The hoop and the horn for Aaliyah Matharu. Rebound, gets her own rebound first, so nice drive. Albert not trying to foul. Right there, you see Bostic goes up. That's gonna be a foul. Auburn taking a 20 second timeout. Collect yourself, make sure that you get the ball in. They are coming at you, so you gotta protect the ball. Free throw knockdown, one point ball game. And Johnny Harris calls her final timeout, but that timeout of 20 seconds will advance the basketball in the half court. Protect the basketball at all costs if you're off. Awesome. Inbound the basketball and quickly Zippy Broughton is there to foul Marshawn Bostic. Bostic seven for eight from the free throw line today. slow this game down and play a possession game. Coming in, Auburn was 71% from the free throw line. They're just above their season average today. Hitting 16 of 21 from the line. And Bostic calmly knocks down the first. 18 points and nine assists for the junior. This is the second. And Florida calls a timeout. Joe Vasili says they had possession. And so Florida spins their final timeout. So we're going to take another look at it. Bostic misses. So Kindred and yeah. Brock going for it. And right there, out of screen, uh, Aliyah Matharu ran to the official to try to call a timeout. Is there possession here? No, there is not. The review of the clock is confirmed, 10.4. So review of the clock is confirmed. Florida timeout, they're gonna move the ball up, and it's Florida ball. All right, so here we go, 10.4 seconds left in this one. Florida will inbound it in front of their bench, Zippy Broughton. One of the three seniors here today, honored before the game here on Senior Day. They've got to get it in. No timeouts to work with. Over to Matharu, who drives the take and the charge. Oh. The charge called against Matharu. She was trying to draw the foul instead. To get the offensive she picks call. up the offensive foul. And she coming in. And that was Taylor Collins who stood there, sacrificed her body. A winning play from the senior. And quickly fouling Honesty Scott Grayson. Whoa. Whew. This last couple seconds of this game. We'll take another look at it. Leah Matharu goes in. Taylor Callen get the charge. And you see Auburn right there just celebrating. They get the ball back and immediately honestly Scott Grayson gets fouled and sent to the free throw line. 
and Aliyah Batharu with that offensive foul is fouled out for the game with 22 points here today. Well, she really helped to keep Florida in this ballgame, especially in this second half. Was held scoreless in that first half, and then all of a sudden, just lit up here in the final two quarters. 14 for 15 from the free throw line from the Florida. But going back, Alice Scott Grayson knocked down the first. This is going to give her 16 points. But since she's been on the floor, this Auburn team just looks different. This one could seal it right here. Can still get a shot up. Got to get it up the floor. An opportunity they to top of Florida. Zippy Brown has it blocked by Odyssey Scott Grayson. Ball game. Wow. What a game. 